And we are back with another episode of From the Raptor. Sam and I are here on Monday, April 4th, the day after the Celtics clobbered the Wizards in just a couple of days after they won a tight one against the Indiana Pacers. Uh, two good games back-to-back. Obviously, the Pacers game, they stumbled a little bit, but they closed it out at the end. And then the Wizards game was, I mean, just like the, the February-March Celtics where they were stomping people left and right. Um, it feels like they're getting a little bit back into the groove of things. I think, I mean, I, I said this on the last show too, the heat and the, uh, Raptors game kind of felt like to me personally, that they just had to get used to life without Robert Williams. And I think now that they've played a couple games, they're getting back into the swing of things. And you saw that with a 40 point win, but, uh, yeah. What do you think of those games? Yeah. I'm on the same page as you. Let, let's go back to earlier in the week. We'll talk about, I mean, we already did on the show, but whatever, too bad if you're listening, now we can look at a different view. So the Raptors game, I still think they should have won. Before the game, I really didn't care, but obviously they made it close. They were in position to win. My philosophy is if you're there, cross the finish line. Uh, Miami, and also the Toronto game, really, you can't measure that mm-hmm. because in terms of progress, getting used to playing without Rob, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Miami is the first time these guys have played without mm-hmm. Rob. And they played a pretty good three quarters and they really lost the game on the offensive end. It was not a defensive collapse, at least in my opinion. There was a lot of times in the fourth where I didn't feel confident in them getting stops, but they still only allowed 106 points and it's Mm -hmm. 104 before you foul them at the end of the game. They lost because Miami slapped his own on. They could not do anything. They were panicking, not getting any really good looks, taking a long time to get shots. Okay, so then you lose that. You go into Friday night. You play a Pacers team who is not very good. Halliburton playing out of his mind. He fouls out, uh, which is a break. You get a break. But the dude's literally 11 of 12 from the field for that game. Like, that's unreal. And the Kings traded him for Sabonis. He's a good player. The Kings, by the way, eliminated from any kind of playoff contention. Yes, sir. But anyways, that game is close. And it's... I feel like it's almost an abnormality. Like that game was close, but at the same time, it wasn't close because the Celtics were bad. It was close because I feel like the Pacers were much better than they should have been. There was a lot of times well, in that game. They have been playing very, very well since the break and not all around. They've been a very good offensive team since the break. Right. So I'll just say that. And you, Udoka said that after the game too, but anyway, sorry, continue. So anyways, that game is close. And the reason it stayed close is because every chance the Pacers had to make a three to keep themselves in the game, (laughs) they literally did it until the very last shot was a miss. But even before that, they were down six with like whatever, 10 seconds, and the guy made a prayer three. O'Shea Brissett. O'Shea Brissett, you bet your ass, it's him. So you've got all these situations where you could have pulled away and – Let's not even act like the Celtics were slouching on defense there because these are all end of the shot clock, like feet behind the three point line, chucking the ball. It's going, I mean, Halliburton, obviously unconscious, but the other guys as well. I mean, yep. you had the Tadze, the center there. Uh, of course, O'Shea, Buddy Heald made one or Jaylen two. Jalen Smith that, looks good. Yep. Mm-hmm. Jalen Smith had an excellent game. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Move on. Sunday, you were there. We can get into that after this. Uh, yep. I personally always enjoy the game anecdotes. I'm sure I hope the listeners do too, because we do. them. But you have the Wizards come in. You give up 60 points in the first half, which isn't great. Mm -hmm. Uh, That was one thing. You know, I talked to my buddies. I was like, well, they played good defense. You know, the total is good at the end of the game, which is important. But that game was kind of fast paced. It on the broadcast, they were talking about. I know you didn't have to watch broadcast. They were talking a lot about. You know, the Wizards are just running up and going. And the Celtics were kind of playing fast, too. So that factored in to the scoring. I don't know what the splits were for shooting or, you know, what looks they were getting off the top of my head. I didn't notice a lot of, like, things where I was like, damn, like, the defense was not good here. It wasn't like the Miami game where you would see guys getting kind of lost in the switches. Or the Pacers game where you could be like, okay, Mm -hmm. they're just hitting a bunch of per threes. Like, there wasn't anything that I that stuck out to me that they were doing wrong or, you know, that was BS happening to them just kind of was probably fast paced. But in the second half, third quarter, they locked up, absolutely locked up. They turned up, they blew it open 
guys didn't really have to play a lot of the fourth quarter uh, throughout this whole, you know, time span I'm speaking about, except for Monday, because they didn't play Jalen and Jason have been excellent. And Brown has 25 plus points in nine straight games, which is a career high. And he's getting hot at the right time. Tatum has cooled off a bit shooting, but unlike early in the season, when he's cold, he doesn't just settle. He was cold on Sunday and he went to the basket. So we're seeing growth is really what I'm getting at uh, yeah. before the playoffs. And you have upcoming a bunch of gate or not a bunch. You have two games and then you're going to play Memphis, who is not going to try because they're locked into the second seed. You're going to play those three teams, Chicago, Milwaukee, Memphis. The first two are going to be kind of test games. I still think Chicago is bad, but you know, you still have to play him still have to you're, play the game. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. And Milwaukee is going to be the game. That is going to be the game where the second seed probably gets decided. Yeah, I am finally no, 100%. done talking. <laughs> I was I, I tabbed out for half a second to find a graphic that uh, displays how bad the Bulls have been for a second. But um, no, they're bad. Oh, yeah. like they're one in fourteen mm-hmm. against all four of the top teams in the East. And you bet your ass the one is against the Celtics with blowing the nineteen point lead. My um. I, I, I can't i don't know what to like type in to find the graphic the graphic basically split up the f- four quarters of the nba season into net rating right uh okay. plus minus net rating celtics obviously number one in the like final quarter the bulls were a bottom five team in the final quarter they're one of the five worst teams in the nba in this last quarter of the season um they've been atrocious they can't win games they can't play defense and it's it's been rough so um Obviously, the Celtics have surged ahead of them. They've surged ahead of the Sixers at this point, even. I think they're a game ahead, so it's not out of the realm that they could fall back, but uh, and the Cavs as well. So, um, yes, I did go to the Wizards game. Shout out to my brother and sister, Grayson Henry. For getting Henry, by the way, who I was going to say, who said this. in the pregame, he said, I, how did he, where is he sitting? Or, no, 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 he said Jack went, or he said, where's Jack? Yeah. And I said, oh, Jack's at the game. I pulled up on my phone the picture you sent me of where you said yeah. And he says, oh, that's right. I bought him those tickets. Yeah, I was like, dude. What? He was like, how does Jack always miss these games, SMH? And then I'm like, dude, you're the one who got me the tickets. Why are you, why are you roasting me for this? But uh, yeah, I sat um balcony. I think first row on the balcony, which I don't usually sit. I usually buy those seats are tickets, excellent. But they're good. The only thing is the glass got in the way a little bit. The glass was a little... Uh, we really? were on like the corner. We were like in the, the corner section. So like the glass was like, it was tall and then short. So you had to like kind of look mm, around it a little okay, bit. So gotcha. it wasn't obstructed, but again, t- minor, minor, you know, uh, first world problems, uh, as they said, it was great regardless. Obviously Celtics, uh, blew out the wizards. So that was great. Watching Neesmith Smith nail threes at the end of the game was electric. Four in a row. Um, yeah, it was great back and forth. And I think who else hit one? Um, Hauser, no, it was Malik Hauser. Fitz. Malik Fitz hit one. Malik Fitz hit one. Um, Hauser did hit And then Hauser did. Hauser lobbed to uh, Luke Cornett was electric. That was great. Uh, I mean, it was just a great uh, day all around. There were a couple foul calls at the Garden, kind of band together and <laughs> booed the refs. The wave got going, Sam, a couple times around there. I don't have uh, strong feelings on the wave, but I know there are people that do. There are a lot people of people that. that think the wave does not belong. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, if, if you're really going to do organized crowd stuff, I think songs are kind of cooler like they do in soccer. But like, mm-hmm. I don't expect uh, everyone to be singing songs of the garden. You get what you get. I think the the chants are very good. Always powerful defense chants very well. Mm-hmm. Now, when you go to games, Jack, do you have a specific routine that you go through? Do you have uh, restaurants that you go to or anything you do before you go in? Uh, no, nah, we kind of just take really? the uh, re- take take the red line in from Quincy Adams. We get in, we just go right into the garden. We get there like 30 minutes to an hour before. We just kind of chill, hang out, watch pregame stuff. Uh, Zoe likes to, you know, see what Deuce is up to pregame with uh, Tatum because that's always funny. Uh, watch the warm ups, watch Marcus take his backward shots. Trick shots. Always great. Um, just look for, look around, players, just chill out before the game starts. Nothing, nothing too fun. We, we've started a routine though. We get, um, for food, we get food at the garden. Cause I mean, it is what it is. Uh, we get, what'd you say? The wallets taking the wallets. Hit. Fair enough. But we, we split a barbecue plate from the barbecue stand. That way it's enough food for two and it's 25 bucks. So it's like 13 bucks a pop for like, it, that's like a meal. I mean, it, for the garden, that's not bad. You know what I'm saying? Like in the grand scheme of things. So you get uh pulled pork, you get 
mac and cheese, you get cornbread, you get coleslaw. It's it's very good. It's it sounds very weird for the coleslaw. garden, but well, you can skip the coleslaw. It's yes. regardless. The mac and cheese and the pulled pork are phenomenal. Uh yeah, I don't know what it's called. It's like the barbecue stand. Shout out though. That's uh very good. So we get that. Okay. Um, yeah, no, the game was great. Obviously, it was a blowout. The first half, like you said, uh, they were letting up a few too many points. I mean, our main man Ish Smith decided once again you to bet. be uh the beast. Um, I think Keith tweeted it. Uh, Brad Stevens should just sign him. Just sign Yish Smith. Just, just get him. Like, come on, sign him to a vet minimum. Make sure he doesn't. Well, it doesn't you know, always work. You saw Fournier, who would play like he was blind. So. He doesn't have to play. Don't, don't give him minutes. Just, just, yeah, just get him keep, off the other teams. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, just keep him on the roster. And I feel like Ish Smith's game is different to Fournier's, where it would translate better because he doesn't shoot. Right, he's not a shooter. He just kind of weaves he in and creates, out, plays his hustle yeah. defense. Yeah. Uh, and he was creating. So was Sadoransky. Those two were kind of chopping up the Celtics with their uh, assists. There was one crazy pass I saw Smith make the other day. Um, it was like a cross court pass. It was against Celtics. I forget who. I think it was to Calwell Pope. But uh, yeah, no Kuzma, no Bradley Beal. Porzingis looked terrible. He looked really, really, really bad. I mean, he scored a lot of points, but he was just getting into the paint. And Celtics were defending him well, and he was just chucking up random, random shots. Couldn't hit a midi. It, it was rough. Not he put sure up, he's think, good. 17. Not I think he's, I think he's overrated. I think he needs to put, be put in a smaller role. I don't know. That's we, what we happens when you play on the Knicks and you dunk a couple times. He was really good on the Knicks. Let's let's he not. He was very good. He led him to playoff success. All right, all right. He was also um, before before we move on. I do want to circle back to the food because you're talking about like the platter. Yeah. When I went, I've done this a couple times. I think I got the uh, chicken bucket. But not to share. I got the 10 tenders with the fries, <laughs> and I just said, that's mine. It's good heaping open. No, I, I feel you. I feel you. It's just because I, if I'm going to spend money, I want to make sure I'm full. I'm not going to yeah. spend like $10, $15 on like three tenders. But by the way, the garden does not have bed fries. But I'm, you know, I'm not going to do three tenders. No, no. You got to get mm-hmm. the 10. And, mm-hmm. you know, you don't finish it. You hand it to your buddy and you say, go nuts. There you go. There you go. We did not get any beers or anything, so the wall didn't break too much. Uh, we just kept it. Kept that, see, that's not a problem. I, I don't drink, so I, I never even think about that. But that's an excellent yeah. point. I, I don't really drink much either, but sometimes you do. You know, it's it's just the garden. You got to get a beer. You watch the game. But, uh, no, yeah, I mean, it was great. Uh, as far as the game goes, though, the bench, Sam, that, that was the story I pulled. The bench was phenomenal. Derek White's hitting shots. Peyton Pritchard's hitting shots. Grant Williams broke his slump. That, that's what you need from see. the bench. You great. can't have him going into the playoffs in a slump. So seeing him knock four out of four threes down is a great sign. Four Derek five. White, he, he did miss one. Oh, he did miss. Yeah, he started chucking. Yeah, Pritchard, excellent. Again, Neesmith made four threes of his own. Like, Neesmith... Keep an eye out for him to get run in these last couple games, whether they're resting people or what. I don't know. If he's got confidence, he's definitely a useful player. I mean, he's someone that can defend. Uh, Ime Udoka said in that Toronto game that he was guarding Siakam, who had 40 points, which I guess technically doesn't make a good case for him being a good defender. But down the stretch, they trusted him the most to cover Siakam. Because he'd been doing a good job throughout the game, and so, he he did a solid job. He did yeah, all right. He, he playing defense, making threes is really what they want him to do. Yeah. Um. Other than that, though, I feel like there's not too much to talk about from the rap uh, Wizards game. I mean, uh, Jalen Brown obviously looked phenomenal. Uh, Wizards, by the way, just parting the Red Seas for Tatum and Brown to get a couple dunks in there. They just, they're they're lost, and you can't really blame them because half their team is hurt and. They're not exactly a good. They're team, not playing so for anything. They're, yeah, they it is what it is. Um, yeah, that, that's all I got. I the, the I don't want to say sad thing is, but they don't really even have many guys that look like okay, they could be the next face of the team. Like Hachimura is good. He didn't play great against the Celtics. Uh, Abdi is good. He didn't really do much against Celtics either. Porzingis is Porzingis at this point. Caldwell Pope looks really good lately, but he's twenty nine, so he's, I don't think he's going to be the face of anything. Um, Kuzma didn't play. Kuzma's played well. I, I don't know. There's this kind of scene. He's not like, playing there. The contract is he's going to go sign for a contender. Who? Uh, Callaway Pope. Okay. Caldwell okay Pope. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. I got you. No. Uh. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I don't know. Is contract up this season? I don't know. 
Not, uh, I know nothing of the contracts. <laughs> I thought that's what you were saying. Let me look at Wizards payroll. No, I said I don't. Uh, I don't know when his con. I had the good old uh, oh, shitter net oh. kick in there, but uh, I don't know about his contract. But I can't imagine he'll be there very long. Next year is partially guaranteed, so he could is be it? on uh, at some point. Yeah, I, I have to imagine the Wizards rebuild here. If the, I, if they si- resign Bradley Beal, I, that's just so dumb to me. I don't know because you're you're obviously not going to go anywhere even with Beal. Like, just let him walk. Like, let him. You know where Beal's going to go, Sam? We don't have to get too deep into this because I know we can talk about like playoff races, etc. It's, uh, it's relevant. They played. Where do you today. think he'll go? Where do you think Beal will go? Oh man, I, I know, know the spot. I don't know a whole lot about like contracts and stuff, like who has cap and stuff like that. I'll throw it a couple places. So I don't. I don't think he signs in Washington. I just don't. No, I don't, I don't see. I don't think so either. There. I could see him. I bet you Memphis has space. No, oh, I don't know. Steven Adams that makes a lot of money. Well, they could sign and trade. Sign and trades are a thing. So you can pick, realistically could, pick anywhere. I so. could see Memphis. I could see Dallas if they have money. You know and who Dallas is interested in? Gobert. I love that for Dallas. I, I think Gobert is a bum, but I think it would be well, good for Luca to. Uh, that's what I'm have. saying. Realistically speaking, you saw how great Russell Westbrook made Steven Adams. You're telling me Luca can't do a similar thing for Rudy Gobert, who's also one of the best interior defenders we've ever seen. And plus, they have better perimeter defenders to put around him than Memphis than Utah does. Sorry, I think that's a perfect fit. Anyways, anyway, back. To Where's it going? Where's it going, Jack? Beal. Uh, Philly. 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 Oh, he's, going Philly. he's going to Philly. Do they have money for that? No. Nope, I mean, you sign and trade. Do? You know what they can do? Trade Harris. Sign and trade. And what's Washington going to do? Like. They'll take the picks and young They'll players that Philly throws in with it. Exactly. So, and Beal has said he wants to play there, and that was the original plan. Embiid wanted Beal, not Harden. Did you know that? Embiid wanted Beal. He didn't want Harden. I well, mean, he didn't not want Harden, but he wanted Beal first. And so, I think those three will team up in Philly. If I had Washington's four. hands are tied, but I'm not. I'm not convinced if they if Beal ends up there that Maxi will still be on that team. Or possible. if. if he is i'm not sure he's gonna be able to fit like like those two well, guys to me seem like they're similar players they said that about harden too they said oh what's maxi but maxi's been great since harden got there I mean, well maxi's playing, off, playing the off the ball but now you're bringing in a guy to play off the ball you play him at the three i don't know i'm not you play I'm just not at the convinced. three i mean you need multiple off the ball guys if i'm philly like as crazy as it sounds you play tybal at the four you play Beal at the. Th- it's a tiny lineup, but if you no, have Embiid and you, you have there. and uh, Tybo oh, playing those, huge, nice pit stains for me if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, though, I think Portland could potentially end up in Portland. I don't know why. If he wants to play with Dame, you know, it could be a thing. I think if uh, I'm Portland, I'm getting. Well, I don't know. There's morality there. He's given you his career, or whatever. But I'm getting rid of Dame. I think you have Simons, mm-hmm. and you can re- re- rebuild and. That's what trust I would him. do, but I don't think. Portland will do that. And then the last place was um you mentioned Memphis Dallas. Uh what was I going to say? Clippers. I think Clippers could potentially if make they have money. Up. That was another one I if was they thinking. Did I'm not convinced Beal is that good. I talked about this in the All pregame. Right. He's not I mean he's, he's a second guy. He's changing, a change number two. He's not changing. Well, yeah, if he put if you fit him on the right team he is. Exactly. It, I'm turning right. I'm saying like he's not going to be a number one he's not he no, i mean i don't think so i don't care if you average th- i mean this is well documented i don't care if you average 30 points a game your team's not winning you haven't made the playoffs since 2018 or did they no no they got in last year i'm sorry they did last year and but i'm not i'm not saying he's good but i'm saying russell westbrook can be the difference between and it's not he's not gonna make you a championship contender as the one option but you know what i'm saying having that change of pace controlling you know point guard who can run an offense is the difference between the washington in the right spot now. he can be effective yeah i don't I think yes. I've tried to Anyways. stand by that at least. I mean, he sucks on the Lakers, and the Lakers suck, which is great. By the way, uh, two games out of ten now. Love We've to got see it. Four games left. I am preparing the tweets. I'm ready. You love to see it. Andrew Doxy, friend of the show, lit up, uh, dude. Lakers film room yesterday. I saw that. Oh man, brutal. You you hate to see that. I mean. Sometimes you go on Twitter and you just get sick to your stomach. And yesterday was just one of those days. I mean, you know, LeBron always very uh, caring of his team. He, See what Davis said it, today? 
he's yeah what do you say like if they're healthy like watch out pretty much he, like, he, he, he basically to see what they could have done he's like yeah i would have loved to see if we were healthy and someone said do you think you could have won a title if you're healthy he said absolutely I was like, oh okay. he's full of shit but also not for nothing like people that get hurt all the time are they unlucky yes but at the same time i i have to feel like there's something they're doing whether it's not eating correctly, not properly, you know, stretching or whatever, like taking care of yourself after a game. The lingering cool injuries, yes. Like there is something that you are not doing that could prevent what's happening to you and you're not doing it. Like, I, I don't know. It could just be a body thing, though. Some sometimes people you get unlucky. Have, like, Some, sometimes you do, but I'm, I'm, can, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what Anthony Davis eats like. And I also know, like, Tristan Thompson Le- said LeBron eats whatever he wants, like Tatum eats whatever he wants. So that's not all necessarily true, but not everyone is like a freak like those two dudes are. You know, ima- and this imagine isn't... Tatum eating whatever he wants. The dude's like chiseled, like his yeah. arms have no fat <laughs> on him. Like, oh my God, how lucky can you be? And um, it's not to say the Lakers weren't like had no, I don't know, I don't want to phrase this incorrectly. Let me finish my sentence because it'll sound bad. It's not to say that they weren't unlucky. Sure, they were unlucky with some injuries, but they wouldn't have been like, like you can see, you you saw a good enough sample size with the three of them on the court to know that it wasn't going to work. So, oh yeah, sure, sure they were unlucky. Anthony Davis got injured a bunch. LeBron missed a bunch of time. You know, that's about it. There's your two unlucky things right there. But I mean, you had a chance against the Pelicans the other day. And show, oh, team chemistry. Yeah, I understand that's important because the Celtics had to build it too. But even at the start of the season, like you were, they were never good. They were, they were never like a top seed. They were always hovering around five hundred, even when they were all healthy. So, uh, yeah, it sucks. Like maybe, oh darn, maybe they could have been a five seed. Shucks, right? Like, I mean, this uh, is a team that was second behind only Brooklyn as favorites to win the title. Brooklyn, and, by the way, Bobby was tweeting this too. Like, why don't why don't they get ragged on? Their season is just as disappointing as the Lakers, almost. Like, yeah, rough. it is. And rough. and it's because I said this last year when they went and got Harden. Like, they traded all their depth away, and plus yep. Joe Harris was out all season. Yeah, but they they legitimately traded all their depth away. Like, I'm I'm convinced that I mean, I guess hindsight's twenty twenty, but you're better off having Levert Allen those guys yep. coming off your bench than bringing in hard. And like, to me, that just didn't benefit them. Like, sure. It's nice to say you have a third guy. And I also think like Curry is a good piece for them, but they really Curry as far great. as this season is concerned, traded James Harden for Curry and Drummond. Simmons, yeah. Which is Simmons is not playing. He's not going to play. Steve Nash came out and said today, He's Steve, not through uh, the play-in. Ben Simmons is out through the play in. He did light basketball activities today. Yep. I can do light basketball activities. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I exercise, but like anybody can do light basketball activities. Like you're a professional athlete on a max deal. Figure it out, dog. So, I'm so happy the Celtics didn't go and get him. We did plenty of discussion about like, you know, trading potentially for Ben Simmons. What would you give up? This, that. Would he be a good fit on the Celtics? Which he might have been. Yeah. Especially the way they play defense now. The dude's not even playing. Mm -hmm. And at that point, like, I understand that he wasn't playing for Philly. He has a herniated disc. Like, that's not a fun injury. Like, obviously, you got to get that fixed up. Um, And at the same time. What does he have a herniated disc from? Sitting on the bench? I don't know. I, I think putting on came the out drip that, to go court no, no, no. side with the shades and the chain inside. Reports came out that he played through it in Philly, but the Nets just want to get it like treated now so he doesn't deal with it for a long time. Why um, didn't he get it treated when he was just sitting there? I don't know. I I don't. I'm not a doctor. I dropped out of nursing school. That so that's know. true. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about this either. So if I'm sounding ignorant, I apologize. But like. Dude, you're just sitting there twiddling your thumbs for let's see, you knew in August you weren't going to play for the Sixers again. You get traded in at the deadline in is that February or March? February. Uh, February. So that's that's at least six months. You knew you weren't gonna play. Like fix it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Again, maybe they didn't know, maybe it was a weird thing. It is what it is. Like at the same time, Brooklyn's hands were tied, realistically. Like it, it was either at this point, even like disregarding 
uh, Ben Simmons, like what, who would you rather have like a uh, disinterested half checked in James Harden or Andre Drummond and Seth Curry and multiple first round picks. Re- like, and that might sound crazy of me, but if Curry's fully locked in, he might even be a better fit than Harden is next to those guys. And that's, no, again, it makes crazy, sense. But, it makes sense. Know. Fits a real thing. And also, I guess, yeah, you want, I mean, Drummond does not care about being there though. Have you seen the things he says? He's about like, yeah, yeah, Brooklyn? dude. Like, I'm not going to be here past the season. Brooklyn? <laughs> yeah. Why? That might be fake. Um, and if, if it is fake, like, I apologize. Like, that I'm spreading. Where'd you see it? I, I think I saw it on Twitter, but April Fool's was last week. But I don't think, I think I saw it before April Fool's. Let's see. Andre Drummond. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why you would say that. I feel like that's, like, a really good fit for him. Obviously, he's not amazing, but just that's having, like... Crazy. Having someone who can grab boards and just a bigger body down low is probably nice for them. I I can I cannot find. I swear to God, I saw. And if you're listening or, or watching on YouTube or whatever, like comment, tweet us, like say if you remember seeing this thing, because you not having seen it, Jack, uh, make makes me worried. <laughs> you know, like I'm like, oh, you know, Jack's pretty yeah, dialed know. in when it comes to things. Andre Drummond Nets pass. I'm just gonna Google it. I'm just confused. I, I don't I remember. Just, I think I remember hearing him say that or seeing that he said that. I don't know. There's oh, fake oh I see something. Around. All right. Uh, yeah, he said it March 23rd. Andre Drummond on his future of the Nets. If we're all being honest, I'm only here the rest of the season. Um, yeah, that, that's I haven't it. thought about it. Uh, who knows what's going to happen in the offseason? I think he was just talking. Yeah, because he's a free agent this summer. I think he was just talking about that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was just talking about like I, I think he was asked about where what his plans are in free agency. He's like, I don't know. I'm here to the end of the season. I'll think about it then. Um, all right. Yeah. No, I see. I see. It's CBS. Uh, yeah. No, I don't know. I think he fits in well. I think the Drogic injury, which I didn't even realize, that sucks obviously because he was actually playing pretty well for them. He uh, got hurt was, when seriously injured. Uh, I don't know how serious it was, but I know it was health and safety. Sorry, he's just in health and safety. Oh, he's got the COVID. So does uh, Spolstra there. Mm -hmm. So does Seth Curry. No, no, not Seth Curry. Sorry. Yeah. uh, Goran Dragic, but he has symptoms, which sucks. Uh, So it's not like he's just he's dealing with it. He's actually like struggling. Uh, What has he been putting up since he joined Brooklyn, though? He's averaging. Oh, never mind. He's not. uh, Never mind. Uh, He's not shooting the ball well, but he's averaging five assists. But uh. Yeah, the Nets are still scary. My question to you is, Sam, do they get out of the plan? Um, just to, it, to me, it depends where they end up. So, I I mean, I watched the whole Atlanta game the other day where Durant scored 55 and they game. still lost. It was a good, good game. game. Excellent game. Uh, so, I'll start there. I think Durant, and it's one game sample size, so like take it with a grain of salt. But I think the fact that Durant's and Curry was out, Jeez, Sam, get into your point. Uh, Durant scoring 55 and you still lose is bad. That's really, really bad. Yeah. And it goes back to, you know, what I was saying earlier. Like, I'm not sure it was smart of them to trade all their depth. Kyrie has been not playing well since he went full time. Maybe he's fatigued. You know, he's playing a little bit too much there. He's not used to it. Do you know what the thing is for me? Sorry, not to cut you off. It's the Lakers and the Nets. Why that like the Nets do a better job because they play their guys? Just why is everyone so hell bent on just playing veterans? Like I'm sorry, it's just stop. Like DeAndre Jordan in Philly, stupid. You know Avery Bradley and DJ Augustine over Malik Monk and Austin Reeves in LA, stupid. You know even in Brooklyn, like you you've got <clears throat> for half the season you had like uh hell who was their center? Who was there? DeAndre Jordan was he on the team at the start of the year? Did, Brooklyn, did he, it was Drummond. No. DeAndre Drummond. was there. He was there. He was last he was in year. Brooklyn. Last no, no, no. Year, though, DeAndre right? was on that team this year. Oh, no, he no, wasn't. He, he was started, on the Lakers. He started in LA. Who was the Nets center at the start of the season? Drummond. Drummond Nets was Nets there. Ball. No, because he got traded there. Remember, he got traded in the Harden deal. Oh, I'm such a clown. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, Claxton was there. Marcus Aldridge. You're playing Aldridge over Nick Claxton. Did, like, they, tra- did they wave him? He's still on the no, team. No, he's right? still on the team. He's just not like <laughs> mobile. Like, I, I, I don't understand the whole NBA concept of not being not willing to play these younger players. Like, look at the Suns as your prime example, people. Like, play your youth and you will have success. Like, and obviously there's exceptions, but like Memphis. Kessler, 
Memphis, Kessler Edwards in Brooklyn, phenomenal season, right? Austin Reeves in LA, he's been one of the few bright spots. Tyrese Maxey, obviously, you give him an opportunity and they're hungry. Rob? Like, play, Robert Williams, perfect. Grant Williams is perfect. Peyton Pritchard and Aaron Neesmith are showing some things now. Like, I- I'll never understand contenders' need to just like, oh, no, we need to play our veterans. Like, we, we got it. Like, I'm, DeAndre Jordan's done. I'm sorry. Like, stop. Just stop. I'm, stop. I'm not going to say he's any good. I'll say probably what they're thinking is we have these this short window to win with these guys, and we don't want to waste it waiting for these young guys or to see if they can figure it out or not. So in their eyes, not saying it's right, they're like, okay, we'll play these guys that they have been on the floor, and even if they're not as skilled as the young guys, they have the – uh, mental aspect of experience. I don't know how yes. much sense that, and but, it really doesn't make sense saying it, but that's probably what their thinking is. Thought processes. Yes. But after watching DeAndre Jordan get lost on three defensive rotations, Avery Bradley clunk a bunch of threes. He's actually shot well this season, but I'm just using it to make my point. And Lamarcus Aldridge, you know, limp up the floor. No offense to Lamarcus, but like he's obviously not as quick. Mm. How how many how many games in a row you see that and not give you know Paul Reed, Nick Claxton, and Austin Reeves a chance? You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't. I don't know. It, It just seems like they're resistant. And if I'm being honest, will Steve Nash and will uh Frank Vogel have a job next season? Who knows? Maybe not. Doc Rivers, I assume. Vogel's gone. LeBron's fired. Vogel's done. Vogel's gone. Vogel's done. But uh, Steve, Steve Nash might not be gone. On the bubble, I'd say. Um, I totally cut you off, though. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't even know what we're talking about. I was saying they, they're they struggling a lot because, well, they trade all their depth. They trade they all their depth. defense. They don't have any defense. Yeah. And they're not – like if K – again, if KD is scoring 55 points – and you are losing a career high for Katie, by the way, who's a, one of the Crazy. greatest scorers ever. A career high, you lose the game yeah. to a team that is not a world beating team. They are battling with you in the play in, and you lose to them. Where's your scoring going to come from in a playoff series when teams great are for the Celtics? By the way. Great for the Celtics. It's They're excellent. Well, we can get into that after this because I, yes. I do want to talk about all that stuff because I've been very interested. You're not getting any scoring besides KD, I said for the millionth time. But again, like you said, they're not playing defense. No. Atlanta is a team that thrives on like shooting threes, and everything was easy for Atlanta in that game. <laughs> they didn't have to work for anything. Kyrie is getting switched on to Gallinari, who was posting him up. Like It was so easy for Atlanta. And I do believe that in the playoffs, they might flip a switch and play a little bit more defense, does it mean the defense is going to be good? No, but it's probably going to be more than you're seeing right now. And going back to the initial question, do you think they can uh, win in, or do you think they can get to the plan? I say yes, and yes, because I think Cleveland's bad. It also depends. It depends where they end up. Well, I personally, looking at everyone's schedules, uh, specifically Atlanta, I think that Brooklyn is going to get up to eight again. They play bums. Like they play Houston, then they play New York, then they play Cleveland, and then they play the Pacers. Like those are all games I think Brooklyn should win. Now, they will should. they go out and win them? I don't know. But I don't feel any kind of, I don't want to say uncertainty because that makes me sound like I really support them. But like with the Atlanta game the other day going in, I was like, Atlanta could win this, you know? I don't think Cleveland's beating Brooklyn. I don't think New York's beating Brooklyn. I certainly don't think Houston's beating them in the Pacers. I don't know. Maybe the Pacers will. If, Pacers if Tyrese uh, Halliburton plays out of his mind like he did in Boston, they have a chance. That team is a pain in the ass. They're like and the Pistons. So what did you say, Central? Sorry. Cleveland, Houston. It, so they Indiana. play Houston first, then the Knicks, then Cleveland, Knicks. and then they close with the Pacers. Okay. So I think they'll beat the Knicks. I will say about Houston – Houston scores a lot of points. They can score the ball. They also don't play defense. But That game is tomorrow, Tuesday. That's going to be a very high-scoring game. The Nets should win, and I think they will win. But don't ex- don't, like, don't, don't sleep on the, pay- uh, the Rockets. I think it's been two out of their last three games. They've had at least two guys score 30. They so, win? Like, they, uh, I think they won. No, I think they 
lost by three in both of them. I think they, but it was, I mean, they're good games. They, I think they felt lost by three in each of them. Okay. Um, or lost by like less than 10 each of them. They kept it close. I mean, I'd love to see um, Brooklyn yeah. end up in those lower seeds because my thing then, is go ahead. Yeah. No, no, sorry. You can't finish. The okay. Talk. Then if they are the lower seeds, then it does become a real possibility that they will not get in. And if they do get in, they're not going to be higher than eight, which we can, you know, segue into the Celtics a little bit yeah. after we finish our thoughts. Yeah. But if the Celtics end up at two, they don't have to worry about it. And they're likely going to get a, I mean, after seeing this season, uh, the way they played Atlanta, I, I don't love the idea of playing Atlanta because they're such a pain <laughs> in the ass. But at the same time, like the Celtics are kind of a different team. And the last two times they did play Atlanta, they took care they of them won. pretty well. They did. But like Charlotte, like that's a team I think is still a little bit of pain in the ass, but I think they can take care of them. Like both if, much better if, than Brooklyn. If no, somehow, if somehow Cleveland like wins that first game, okay. like Cleveland is bums. <laughs> I'll that, say this. That, and I was that's a sweep. That. I'll say it right now. If they play Cleveland in the first round, it's going to be a sweep. Cleveland is not great anymore because of their injuries. But they're that's not. What, well, that's like, what I'm talking about. I'm yeah, not saying they're not, a bum. I'm not saying Sexton's yes. a bum. My not point is. Jared, is Jared Allen back? Jared Allen's not back and Sexton's hurt. I'm not either. saying he's a bum either. Like, they're all good players. They're injured yeah. and they're beat up. Uh, they have. My point is, they have an all-star. And chew on that, Lakers, saying health. Yep. Yeah, they have an all-star. They have an up and coming rookie. They have young, hungry guys. They're better than the Washington, Indiana tier, obviously. I agree. They're, I, I don't think they're on the level of the Raptors anymore. I think they're probably still on the level of the Bulls. And I still think they're around the level of Atlanta and Charlotte. Atlanta might scare me more because they have Trey Young, but I think as a team, they're on the same playing field. And I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Brooklyn doesn't get in the playoffs. I think. In a one-game series, Atlanta can beat them, just as you saw. I think Charlotte can beat them, just as you saw. And I don't think it's crazy to think in a one-game, Cleveland can beat them. I don't. It's, I'm not saying it's likely. Uh, I'm not. I'm just not convinced that happens. And, and I'm the not real saying it's thing, likely. But the, the difference is, if they're nine or ten, okay, maybe. Okay, maybe they miss it. I don't yes. think they're going to lose two lose twice straight games sense. to that bunch of teams. Mm-hmm. No, I got you. I got you. And I think that is why it's crucial that for the Celtics sake. Specifically because I don't think Cleveland's dropping past eight. And I yeah, think Cleveland's yeah. the worst of the bunch. So if they get eight, they're kind of like giving a layup at the beginning. I don't think Cleveland's the worst of the bunch. Who's the worst of the bunch? Charlotte? Yeah, but I think you it think depends so? on what, I think it's which Charlotte you get. Because Charlotte's very streaky. That's I think fair. if it's good, good Charlotte, they're probably a little bit better than Cleveland. But I don't. If it's the bad Charlotte, Cleveland right worse. now, even with their, all their injuries, you think Charlotte's worse? It like I said, it depends on what Charlotte. But yeah, okay. I like Cleveland. I think they're good. But uh, anyway, so we can talk about the standings. Yes, Celtics are currently sitting at second, two games behind the Miami Heat, which I think that's probably out of their own possibility getting that one seed. You needed to win that game against Miami, and you didn't. It's fine. Um, and right now, it's kind at of this point, like that was the way we're good. talking. I'm not. Just, I mean. Listen, we went on this show like two weeks ago or last week, whenever, and we're like, it doesn't matter who they play. Like, even if it's Brooklyn, like they shouldn't be trying to avoid them, which I stand by. You shouldn't be losing games on purpose at this point. If you want to rest, guys, fine. But I, I right now feel like it's very important to get the second seed. You want home court through the first two rounds. Mm -hmm. And you have the tiebreakers over both Milwaukee and Philadelphia, yes. if I'm correct. So yes, yes. the Celtics now control their own destiny, I believe. I Wholeheartedly. Think if they – Celtics win every game. Actually, if the Celtics win their next two games, they will get the second seed. Huge. And uh, that's not to say that they'll be easy games. I think you should take care of uh, Chicago. Milwaukee will be a tough one, obviously. Milwaukee is going to be a game. Mm -hmm. But um, the last game of the season is Memphis, too. So that's not easy either. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it'll be a tough end of the season. Three road games, too. Uh, if the Celtics went out there, the second seed, I think the Heat have locked up the first seed unless they collapse here. Uh, Bucks and Sixers are fighting for three, four. And if I'm being honest, I think they're fighting for who gets to play Chicago and who has to play Toronto. And I, realistically speaking, right? It's like, a good point. I, it's an I, excellent I've, point. I've said this, Sam. I've said this ever since we started to see the Celtics rise. I do not want to play Toronto. I do no want no part of Toronto. Well, simply because you don't want to play all. Toronto in the first round. Now, yes. if you said, "Hey, yes. Jack, do you want to play uh, Milwaukee, Philly, or Toronto?" You'd say Toronto. 
Of course, of yeah. course. But I'm talking potential first round yep. matchups. Toronto is by far the one I do not want to play outside of obviously Brooklyn, but uh, you know, um, they, they play tough. It's why, because Nick nurse will play all those guys 45 oh, minutes and night. Um, he's great coach. He's great coach. And I've, I've said, I hate to play against him, but I love him as a coach. Not stand that guy. Toronto's annoying. And that, that's the best word to say. Toronto is annoying. Um, you don't want to play him in a seven game series. You'd rather play Chicago. You'd rather play Cleveland. You'd rather play Atlanta. You'd rather play Charlotte. I'm not going to go as far as to say I'd rather play Brooklyn because I think that's a little crazy, but uh, yeah, it's very tough. It, it's going to be it's going to be a tough one. Um, that being said, though, Brooklyn doesn't play any defense, and the Celtics are the best offense since the All Star break. Yes, which is not something uh, you thought you'd be saying. I mean, I, I guess know. you you know, well, Sam, you didn't think you'd say any of this at the beginning of the season. Yeah, but like True. the offense was like really what was bad. We were literally out here like. Well, like they're what they're doing is okay, but like they all can't shoot. So yeah, what are they gonna do? And now yeah. everyone can shoot all of a sudden, which is fantastic. Uh, so they are the number one offense. Tatum got his head out of yes, his ass. They are. Uh, Grant consistently good from three after that slump. Uh, you know he's made four or five. If you want to, Derek White. Count. Derek White has uh, found his footing. Pritchard since Schroeder has been traded has been excellent. Jalen Brown really has looked great off the dribble shooting the three he's been doing that little size up and then the pullback and that looks something looks like something he's very comfortable doing horford has taken a step up i actually want to see horford's uh three point percentage for the year you don't have to look it up i'm already on the website oh <laughs> uh let me guess let me guess for the season or since uh i want to see what he brought it up to for the season for the season if i had to guess it's probably hovering around 34 if I had to guess, it may be 33. Oh, 32.6. Okay. Not as great as I thought. I was close. 34. Tatum, 35%. There you go. Brown, 36. There you go. Schroeder's not on the team. Smart, 32.2. Perfect. Richardson is not on the team anymore. Was, Grant, yeah. 40, 41.8. Oh, beautiful. Tice, 30. Pritchard, 41. Now, well, Tice, which is, Tice on the Celtics, though. That's a very big difference. What's Tice since joining the Celtics? I don't know. You can click his name. It'll show the split. I'm on ESPN. I'm not an NBA. Oh, I'll look it up. Anyways, you can do going. it. Uh, I forgot Jabari Parker was on this team. Nee Smith. <laughs> oh, never mind. That's Cantor that had 40%. I misread that. <laughs> Jeez, they've uh, had Tyson. a lot of guys on this team. <laughs> Tice is 30% since the Celtics. So, okay. yeah. Uh, Yeah, no, I mean, the whole Celtics roster is shooting the ball average, which is crazy. Like, if you look at them on the season, let me look at uh where they rank i bet they're not even that far down on the list of three-point shooting like percentage wise because the numbers of down this year the celtics are the middle of the pack number 15 in the nba when it comes to three-point shooting percentage that's really not as bad as you'd think no. uh, miami's number one atlanta's number two clippers number three and then uh yeah out of all playoff teams the worst team in the nba is the mavericks um and yeah, the Celtics are 35.2 on the year. That's pretty bang average, if you ask me. So it's not bad. Can't pretty complain good. too much, especially considering the first half of the season they had, which was not good. Yeah. But um, anyways, back to playoffs. Uh, we can wrap it up though. I don't think there's too much more to talk about. Who who are you looking for? I mean, probably Cleveland, if, from what you're saying. If I could have any team in the first round, it'd be Cleveland. It's gonna be a sweep. It's not gonna be close. Okay, um, okay, okay. <laughs> No, seriously, like I don't think it'll be close. I'm not like I'm not as in this like this is not Green Team or Sam. This is I don't think that team's good. I've been paying attention to the standings lately because they've played a lot of games that have been important for you know the Brooklyn race or uh, other teams around the South. I really wanted them to beat Philly. I really wanted them to take and, well Philly. to their credit. You know though that was a close game. That was a good game. Is better than I thought they would give uh, in a playoff series. But they are losing a lot of games right now. And that that's what it's based off. It's not like, do I think Jared Allen and Mobley and Garland are bad players? No. I think they've been good as a team this season. I just lately they haven't been beating anyone. So why why be scared of them? Next, I'd probably like I mean, I guess we're picking from the play in teams now. But Charlotte. I guess you would watch Charlotte and then Atlanta, then Brooklyn. And then uh, Chicago would be fantastic, too, if they fall to mm -hmm. six, which they are right now. They are six, but I, I'd rather get two. I, I want to, I want home. Oh, I want two as well. But I you want know, home court over if Milwaukee. If you do fall to three, which I think they might, I'm not sure they win in Milwaukee on 
Thursday. Yep. Not there. Uh, then you would have an easy matchup there as well. I don't think Chicago's anything. We'll see. We'll see tomorrow or not tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Wednesday. Chicago Wednesday. on a back to back after playing who else but Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you guys will be uh, listening to this tomorrow. Tuesday. Tuesday. Tomorrow, Tuesday, Monday. Today is Monday for us. But uh, my ideal playoff situation, I think this is for you. Celtics get two. Yep. Cleveland win their game, get seven. Uh, Celtics play Cleveland. And then, absolute worst case scenario, the Celtics, I mean, it will happen. The Celtics play Bucks or Philly in the second. They're going to have to. They're going to have yeah. to put the big boy pants on. Oh, unless Miami magically collapses, Milwaukee surges in the first, but I don't, I, I just don't think that's I have no interest in playing Miami. I'd rather play either of the other two teams. Really? What a turnaround for Well, me. not from a Celtics winning standpoint, but I don't want to watch it. I don't want to. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like, Fair enough. Like I, that game last week like pissed me off so much. I told you. Between I told Lowry you. Lowry and Jimmy Butler like falling down on a jump shot. Bam was excellent in that game, and he was a mm -hmm. big difference maker who, again, I think is the best player on that team by far. And, you know, then they got all those guys running out. I mean, Hero's annoying. Duncan Robinson was off. Struess was excellent. I mean, they're just such a deep team, man. They're, they're really uh, well put together, and they play well together. Like, I don't want to deal with that. I'd rather, yeah. like, watch I – mean, ideally, like, for viewership and, like, what I would enjoy watching, I'd like to see him play Milwaukee. Yes, uh, I agree. Because I don't want to watch him beating hard and shoot a bunch of free throws. But who do you think the Celtics have the best chance against out of those two? Oh, man. I still think I, Milwaukee. I – They've just – we'll see Thursday. You know, yes. we, we have another game to sample size. If yeah. they win Thursday, I'll feel a lot better about it. They just play Milwaukee really well. They do. They have for the last two seasons. The They only lost one game last season. That's because Tice missed a game uh, winning three at the buzzer. They lost mm -hmm. Christmas this year because they crapped themselves in the fourth quarter. And as crazy as it is, the reason they play Milwaukee and Philly so well, answer the question for me. You know who it is. Uh, one man. Is it Rob? It's Al Horford. Yeah, well, He's Horford the reason is excellent. They play him so well. When you said he, Philly, I should have been smart enough to say Al. He guards Embiid well. He guards Giannis well. And by the way, if they get to the second round, knock on wood, Rob could be back, right? And that'd be huge. And every I don't know if you... every sign in person that is talking about Rob points to him being back sooner and he was rather than later. He was hyped Brad Stevens on the radio last week said Rob was walking around the practice facility. Does not mean he's running, jumping, doing any kind of training. Uh, but he was walking. He's walking. You are also looking at, okay, so he he is, well, let's see. He had surgery last Thursday, I think, or Wednesday. Wednesday he did because I was working. So that will be one week uh, on Wednesday before they play Chicago. Then the next week we'll be playing games. Then the week after will be first round. And then, you know, you're getting close, getting close to him coming back. Yes, sir. And like you said, even Woj was saying, like it could be even shorter than those yes. four six weeks they mentioned. So, knock on wood, uh, we shall see. Uh, I'm very hyped for Rob to come back. I, I mean, I, I don't know what else there's very to say. I think, team. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. So I was just stalling. Joel Embiid on JJ Reddick's podcast. I was going to say this uh, as well. Excellent, <laughs> was it, Jack. Did, well done. You see what he was asked. He was I like, did. Oh, who defends you well? And he goes. He kind of went around and he in said fairness, nobody. He said, he said nobody, which, to be fair, is true. No one really defends. Like, no one can stop NB. No one can stop NB. But when he he was like, well, people point to Al Horford. And sure, Al Horford. But they always send doubles. And they do. They, they send help because Embiid is great. But, uh, you know, the Celtics defend him well. And the fact that he said out of anybody in the league, he pointed to Al Horford. That should tell you, like, Embiid's not scared of Al Horford. Obviously, I don't think. Embiid's I think scared that's anybody, bulletin but... board material for Embiid. Not that I really care. Like, I still think Horford does an yeah. excellent job. And you know, there were a couple games where he did. He did the yep. season. Though one, hey, one of the games they lost him? was Cantor. You know who else guarded him well in that game? Who's that? Tice? Sam. Say no. Nope, say my boy's name. Yes, sir. My boy Grant Williams. He held his own. Did it against Cat. He did it against Joel. He did it against Joker, the giant killer. That's the name. Yes. That's what I will call no, him. The Grant Batman. On. The Batman. Joker. Giant killer. What a beast. Anyways, uh, that's all I got for today. Is there anything else you wanted to bring up before we get on out of here? 
Nah, man, we did 50 minutes on uh Yes, sir. Quick turn. We'll give you two this week. Yes, we sir. Can do hopefully. That, uh, before Jack goes so. on vacation, if the game's aligned for, well, I guess yes, next sir. week we really won't have any reason to do two. We'll probably do one early in the week. Yeah. And then, oh, I don't know. We can react to the plan and stuff. We'll see. Yeah, we'll try our best. Anyways, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We appreciate it as always. Uh, go Celtics. That's you know all I got to say. Three tough games. I, like I said, Chicago hasn't been playing well, but other than that. The Memphis you know, game is not going to be tough. If they want to win that, they'll be able to win. Why? Memphis isn't going to play anybody. They're they're locked into the second okay. seed. They're not playing a soul. Yeah, they're still winning, though, regardless. They're, oh, they're not bad. But even no the guys point. that are winning them games now, I don't think are going to see a lot of time in that last day of the season game. The, but they sat Dylan Brooks, John Morant, Tyus Jones, Jaron Jackson Jr. Or not Dylan Brooks. They sat like five of their starters and they still beat the Suns the other day. Okay. Well, I mean, my, my point is they'll probably be sitting a lot of people, but don't care. I hope the game's meaningless. I hope the game's meaningless. Yes. So we'll hope but they beat. At the very Chicago least, more. you're absolutely right. Well, I don't know. Chicago, we'll see. They'll be on a back-to-back, and I think they're bad anyways. But that Milwaukee game is not going to be a joke. Huge, yes. And, hey, hopefully the Celtics can win these first two so they themselves can sit guys for that Memphis game. Bench them. Bench everybody. Sit everybody. I don't care. Sit Tatum. Sit Horford. Hell, sit Pritchard. (laughs) Play Matt Ryan 40 minutes. Let him play. Play Uh, all the boys they look like they picked off the street. (laughs) Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give Malik Fitz the starting job so we can do his celebrations. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it. And I'll throw it over to Sam. Yeah, thank you guys very much for listening or watching. If you're watching on YouTube, you're probably on Guy Boston or Bannertown. If you are, subscribe. If you're on Guy Boston, you can always catch us before just about every game. Once in a while, we have a day where the uh, stars align and no one can do it. But we do the pregame. It's always a lot of fun. The chat is usually pretty lively. It's an assortment of Jack, me, Tim, and KJ. You'll get probably three of us, at least two, and it's always a blast. If you're listening on a streaming service, follow us. That way you don't have to wait till Jack tweets out the pod to find out if it's new or not. And, yeah, follow Jack at Jack's One NBA. He's always doing things, writing. He's writing everywhere. If you're on a website, you might see his name. And you can follow me at Sam with That's our show for you. Check, check, go. Come on. Taco, taco, taco.